YouTube this is going to be a quick video hopefully of a repair to a power supply this is off a Virgin cable uh, modem or router or what have you I'm going to show you how I repaired it it's very very simple it was just one cap in this case and then I'm going to show you a sort of a quick overview of how it works Janet and John version and then I'm going to show you some of the things that differentiate a decent quality supply like this and for some of the rubbish you get on eBay and Amazon. Right, this is Netgear Power Supply, it's 4A, it's Virgin Super Hub. It is an AD6612 12 volt unregulated power supply. That's what it should look like. This is the one I'm repairing. It was putting out 3 volts, it should be putting out 12. It's unregulated, so actually it puts out about 14 and that drops when there's a load on it. Um, I'll quickly show you what it's supposed to do. 14.29 that's the one that does work I didn't show me opening it up fixing it last night because it was late and I didn't think to do it but it's pretty easy got one screw there and a clip there clip there clip there and the whole thing comes apart you might break a clip like I did I've aerodited it back on never mind this is what it looks like inside and the problem with this was this capacitor here that capacitor is or was a 25 volt 680 mic no name 105 degree cap see the top's domed like that I'll put it on the gizmo and show you quick in circuit leaky 7.3 ohms didn't have any 680 mic caps but what I do have are these Sanyo uh, 1000 mic caps 0.05 ohms not 7.3 ohms so that was clearly the problem I also just tested the uh, little cap there that is 50 volts and 10 mic. Just swap that out just for good measure. It's right near this, which gets hot. And the reason that this has failed is probably because it gets hot and it's in a plastic case. Um, I also just check these and they're fine. Just do the usual warnings. You know, this is mains voltage. If you don't know what you're doing, don't touch it. And if you do take it apart, these caps can have, you know, serious voltage on them. You see they're rated, they've got written on them 400 volts, 400. And I think they've got bleeder resistors on them, um, so they will discharge over time. But I've actually done it. I didn't, you know, I thought, oh yeah, it's only 10 mic, you know, what can the harm be? And I accidentally touched it and I felt it. Not on this one, but on something else. So just be careful. Um, you can discharge them with, you know, an insulated pair of pliers um, across the terminals or a resistor better across the terminals, but make sure they're dead with a multimeter before you start touching, grabbing, or what have you, the board. Pretty standard design, you've got two pins coming in there, line and neutral, and if you can see they've been clipped, and there's some strain relief there. Uh, so they, they're not gonna fly off and start touching other parts of the board. They go straight in, you've got a, a, a suppression cap here, which basically is across the line and the neutral. I think it's a class X or class Y2, or X2 capacitor, and it's just smoothing out transients on the, um, the incoming line. You've then got a MOV, which is a metal oxide resistor, that, that takes the whack out of any inrush current when you first plug it in, the surge current. You've then got a fuse, which is pretty much the first thing in line. And then you've got a bridge rectifier, which is made out of four diodes. It's sometimes you get a chip, sometimes you get four diodes, but it's full bridge rectifier. That bridge rectifier then feeds this ballast cap. You've got, then got a choke, which is kind of like more filtering, so it's going through a cap, through a choke, through another cap, uh, and then you've got the primary switching transistor here, and the, uh, the uh, what do you call it, the transformer here. So, main switching transistor, big heat sink on it because it gets hot, and that's pulsing the, by the time it's in these, uh, pulse DC through this, uh, through this um, transformer, it then got a diode on the other side, see there? That's normally a shocky diode to, to rectify it on the output side. And then the, the cap that I've changed, which smooths the output, it acts like a big reservoir, just smooths the output. And then a choke, um, another choke on the output as well, straight out. So the reason it didn't matter so much going a thousand mic from 680, all it's really doing is smoothing that, uh, that output. So a bigger reservoir is probably better, if anything. This little blue guy here goes straight across the uh, the sort of low voltage side. It goes straight across the transformer between the low voltage side and the, the, the high voltage main side. It has to be a class, I think it's a Y2, it has to be able to withstand like several sort of four kilovolts or eight kilovolts, don't know. But it, they normally look like that if, if they're the proper, um, the proper sort of rated 
uh, capacitors and they have to be rated because you should have separation between the the main side and the uh, you know the side that, that's basically connected to that. On the back side here we've got some uh, diodes and bits and bobs surface mount I think primarily I'm not 100% sure but I think they're just snubber networks more or less for the protecting the transistors I think this is the auxiliary transistor and this is the main switching transistor um, but that is about as far as my knowledge goes but the reason this wasn't working is that this had basically turned into a resistor and it was stopping the st stopping the output um, that's typically what happens on these I probably skipped over a few bits but that's a kind of Janet and John version of how the thing works Dry repaired with paint on the top from when someone was decorating Bit of a pain to get in, the bottom has to go in first, and then the top clip, and then the screw. The screw is there. And just plug that in, turn it on, and I'll just try and fiddle around with this and get the multimeter on it. And now you can see it's working 14.18. All good. So that's a decent power supply, fuse, um, filtering, decent wiring, trustworthy. Just have to forgive me while I have a quick whinge and a whine and a moan about some of the things I've seen on other power supplies. First up, this one. These are all off of Amazon eBay. This one is a 3 volt LiPo charger. <clears throat> Crappy case, come off easy. Even if it didn't, the uh, the wire did. These are mains wires. Dodgy, rubbishy soldering on there onto the mains pins. One of them's come off. Nothing at all stopped that flying across. And livening up the the, uh, the low voltage side, lethal, absolutely lethal. Again, this has been stuffed in. You can see on the wires where it's been pinched. That could have equally gone across something here and livened up the low voltage side. If that weren't bad enough. Look at the state of the transformer. It looks like it was wound by blind pew on a bad day. Not only that, if you actually take the transformer apart, which I did on this one, you'll often discover that the tape, the insulation tape between the primary and the secondary and sometimes the sense windings is either non-existent or doesn't go all the way up and down meaning that the uh, isolation is relying often on the varnish on the, the, the wire itself so that wire is, the varnish is all that's between you and the high voltage side they've made an effort to separate the high and low voltage sides here but that is a waste of time if the transformers wound poorly which that one was no fuse at all, one ohm resistor, very common in these. Again here, uh, this is a USB supply, no fuse at all, there's a one ohm resistor. Um, this was out of a high end light with a USB charger, no fuse and one ohm resistor. Um, it can work as a fuse, but it's not really designed to be a fuse. Um, this one has got a fusible resistor, sometimes you get a fusible resistor. At least that is designed to be a, a sort of a fuse. Transformer's not so bad on that one. What's wrong with this one is this capacitor here across the high and low side doesn't look to be a proper Y-rated safety capacitor. Sometimes they didn't even go that far. Sometimes they just put a ceramic cap across that, which is also not very good. This is a USB uh, power supply on the face of it. It looks okay. You've got a fuse coming in here. You've got a decent looking transformer that's the live coming in there it has been cut out but it's incredibly close really to the uh, to the shield on the USB so that's just a few things uh, a few things to watch out for other things a lot of these don't have any uh, inrush limit no protection at all against um, noise a lot of them don't have any protection for the transistors that actually do the switching which leaves them vulnerable to shorting out um, basically, you know, you, you haven't got to look that close to see that you don't really want to be leaving that on in your house, you know, down the back of a sofa or something for any length of time. Hopefully you found that interesting. If you've got a Netgear router or a super hub or what have you, and you've got no power supply, you know, you might be able to fix it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all later and take care. Cheers, bye.